Ladies and gentlemen of the Cult of Skinjili, welcome. We are reaching the third and final part of the Greek raid assessment, uh, where I will discuss the Gamma raid now. So the first Alpha raid discussed characters that had different locations, city, global, and cosmic. The second, the Beta raid video, discussed high-impact characters or and characters you wanted to work on based on origin, tech, bio, skill, mystic, and mutant. Now we enter the Gamma Raid, and the problem with the Gamma Raid is it is affiliation tagged, and there are characters that have affiliations that are not mentioned here. So off the top, any Fantastic Four member, any Marauder, well, almost any Marauder, uh, as Guardians, they just don't matter in this raid. So. If you look back at the characters that you were super excited about in the alpha and the beta, and any of them had a tag that weren't in the gamma, you can kind of see where we're going to go with this. Maybe you want to back off a little bit. That said, there are plenty of characters in the gamma that are also high impact in the alpha and beta, so you can kind of look at them as additional phenomenal options. For example, taking a quick look at the early stages, you get to use either Guardians, or Avengers, and the Spider-Verse. There is definitely the BKT mentioned multiple times, and since they've been mentioned multiple times and there's only three nodes that really need the Avengers in the early stages, maybe a couple at the end, you'll know that any investment you have in Guardians characters will definitely come back to help you here, both at the beginning in the early stages and, of course, at the end when you're fighting the final for the 100%. Uh, as for the Avengers, that's a little bit less fortunate. Uh, the Avengers characters don't have a lot of sustain. But the positive news is you only have to go through three nodes and it's a buddy shared lane and the final boss node can be handled by the guy who has the stronger Guardians team. Same thing up the middle. Uh, if you pay attention, Shield, phenomenal. Aim, phenomenal. Brotherhood, phenomenal options right up the gut. Shouldn't have any problems. Defenders, Hydra just recently got their rework so I'm not going to include them in this conversation. They might end up being great. We don't know. Red Skull's not out yet. Well, he will be around the 26th of March if I suspect correctly. And uh, Mercenaries. Obviously the worst thing about this is that you can't use Punisher, uh, but there are Mercenaries that we've mentioned in previous videos like Merc Lieutenant, Merc Riot Guard, and Killmonger who should be able to cover this as well as Deadpool. So you should be fine. And now you know that there's an overlap. Same thing with, well, I would say the hand, but let's face it, you're using the Kree on both of these. You're using Minerva. You're using Captain Marvel if you have her. If not, you're using Ronin, maybe Korath, and a couple of the Kree minions. You might sneak in. You're not using any Ravagers, so don't don't bring in your Yondu. You don't need them. Uh, so these are basically just Kree nodes, and that's kind of it. So when we take a quick look at the teams it becomes pretty self-explanatory. I didn't have to go too far. I just separated them based on teams on the, one of the best or better comps you can have. Guardians, pretty self-explanatory. Wakandan, pretty self-explanatory. Shield, etc. Even notice I even said Kree, no Ravager or Hand, just the Kree minions uh, with, well, I'm sorry, just the named Kree characters with one minion. This is the team I use. You might have better success with their team. As a matter of fact, if you do, Comment below. Let me know what team you use to do the Kree, Ravager, or Hand Lanes, especially the boss, because this team I'm able to one-shot with. So if you have a better team, I would love to hear it so I could use a different team. The Avengers with a little frowny face. Sucks to use them, but you only have to use them three times. Brotherhood, as well as the X-Men and Brotherhood comp. Uh, the Defenders with a Merc. I've gone ahead and thrown Killmonger in there. One of many options. Aim. Don't need them much, but... If you've invested in them recently for one reason or another, you shouldn't have too many issues with the early stages, so they do have a pretty decent overlap there. And then, of course, the brand new Spider-Verse. Again, I don't know if Spider-Verse is going to stay uh, one of the tags. It seems to be one of the bonus tags in this raid, but as of right now, it exists, and it's probably going to exist in some form, whether it be Spider-Verse or like the beta has Sinister Six or something different. Just kind of keep track of that, and you should be okay. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out is the uh, X-Men team. Uh, I don't have the last character because it might be Colossus. If you have, it might be Juggernaut. It might be someone completely different. It might be Toad or Beast in the future. Uh, for the shared nodes, again, same kind of conversation with Phoenix. If you have a Phoenix and you have a Colossus, you could probably get away with using those. You don't have to use Phoenix to kill. You can just kind of stay around and be a, a dispeller. 
uh, and you get a little bit of sustain. You can kind of play a very long game. You can also just use Juggernaut to make sure you're protecting a lot of the characters, charging up Storm for one of the final nodes. Whatever works best for you, I would recommend. But if you take a quick look at the characters, you're going to finally see the overlap. You're going to see that not many of the previous raids cared about using Captain America, Black Widow, or even Vision. That's not to say you couldn't use him, he just wasn't a high priority character in those raids. If you did use him, great, you'll have a little bit of value out of him in this raid. Same thing with Falcon, but Nick Fury has definitely been a marquee character in the previous two. All of the X-Men have been uh, necessary or mentioned at one point or another, so there is a large overlap there, as well as with characters like Ronin, Minerva, CM. So now that you've seen all three of the videos, it's probably a pretty great picture for you to be able to look at and say, you know, it looks like if I work on my Guardians, uh, I will have the ability to do many different lanes in many different raids. And that's correct. Uh, versus some level, you'll have the same value in the Defenders. Now, I don't necessarily think the Defenders would be absolutely great in a lot of the lanes in the beta, but some of the characters might be standout in the beta, and therefore feel free to use them. Uh, they're definitely good here if that's the lane you want to take. Uh, Wakandans, this is the first time you see the entirety of the Wakandan team, Mbaku and Okoye making uh, themselves present. But Shuri and Killmonger have definitely shown up before, as well as Black Panther. So when you reach the Gamma, and again, with a grain of salt, as this is the one that's most likely to change most frequently. The fact that they haven't yet is really just a sign of them, not necessarily proof that it wouldn't happen. So keep in mind that they might change or add affiliations and then other characters like the unmentioned characters, like the Invisible Woman um, or, you know, obviously any of the Fantastic Four. Uh, Ultron, surprisingly absent from here because he has no affiliation tag and you can't use him. So if you can't use Ultron, how good is he going to be uh, to invest in. The answer is obviously invest in Ultron, don't be crazy. But when you're looking at what characters uh, from a perspective of uh, saving resources, because this isn't a resource management game, all games are resource management games, this is a hero collector game, but all games have aspects of resource management and this game has a pretty rough tumble when it comes to resource management. So why should you worry about investing in 20 or 30 characters when you can start looking at individual characters that are great in multiple game modes and work from there? So the next video is a little up in the air. I'm going to let you guys comment and let me know what you want to do. I want to do one on U7. The problem is no one is doing too well in U7 without a significant advantage, whether it be through monetary or luck or red stars or other luck. Um, U7 does tend to be taking a lot out of people. Most people can get 30% who've been attempting it. Uh, maybe a good few people now are pushing the 60% or a little bit higher, but 60% seems to be the soft cap of what people are capable of doing right now without a decent amount of spending or investment one way or the other. Uh, and if you are, please feel free to comment below and tell us your secret. Tell us how you're going further than 60% without using raid heals or buying refreshes. I would love to hear it because I would like to do it as well. Uh, other than that, I, I don't know. There are plenty of different teams and I can go over the teams that overlap before I do my finale video where I rank all of the characters. Or I can go straight into the finale, the which characters will help you in the Greek raids and treat U7 as a completely separate entity because most players are not going to be building towards U7. There is some overlap, but the truth of the matter is there are characters that are phenomenal in all of the Greek raids that have no business at all in U7. For example, the Defenders. They are not good in U7 does not matter how strong they are. They're not good in U7. Anyone will tell you that. There are other characters. The Guardians of the Galaxy. Individually, Rocket, not great. Everyone has very scaled health. So while you may be getting phenomenal effort out of Rocket for Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, as well as other things, 
he loses a little bit of value. And right now, I don't believe there's any one correct answer, but I'll let you guys decide. So comment below, let me know. Do you want the uh, rating system for the current Greek raids? That of course factors in U6 because the BKT is present, so there's no reason to worry about it. Or do you want me to do a video regarding teams for U7 as they stand right now and incorporate that in my ranking system for the characters. Either way, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it as always. Have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I'll catch you later.